What is going on, clan? It is finally here, a full all-in-one Cuphead Platinum Guide. Now, I do want to give a huge, huge shout-out to Arcane Hornet. This guide would not be possible without his work. He wrote a full roadmap for the guide going in order as convenient as possible, especially for beginners, so that way everyone can experience the, this masterpiece, because honestly, I am so addicted to Cuphead. So I hope this guide does help you get the Platinum. I'll have all his information in the description below. Now, last thing before we jump right into it, if you're new around here, here's a real high class bout. And begin! Or for you slap addicts out there. Alright, so now that's out of the way, you can start the game and choose your character of choice Cuphead or Mugman. Mugman's the goat. And one thing I do recommend is going into the options and changing the controls and switching the shoot to R2 instead. Um, that just allows you to basically constantly be shooting without it being a bit awkward, at least I find, but you may prefer having shoot on square. So ultimately, mess around with the settings, see what you like and what feels good. And then you just want to speed through this little tutorial in the beginning because we're going to get our first collectible. Also, here is where it teaches you how to parry slap, and this is going to be vital to getting the A ranks as well as just making the boss battles much easier. So make sure you kind of understand the parry mechanic and the pink objects within the game. You can also use a special attack with circle, and that was from the cards in the bottom left next to the HP. And then there's also our first collectible, which is a coin. So after you've done that, you can exit the tutorial and then leave this house. And we'll make our way towards the bridge and speak with the Apple NPC. Now he's going to give us three gold coins. That'll give us enough coins to go into the Pork Rinds Emporium, which is the in-game shop. And you want to buy the finger gun called Spread. This is going to be handy on a lot of the fights. And once you leave, it's going to give you a tutorial how to equip it. So make sure you equip that before we go into our first fight. Now, before we jump into our first boss, there are two ways you can approach the game. Just beating it on regular difficulty, just worry about survival and getting through each boss. Or, if you feel you're comfortable enough, you can keep doing them until you get an A- rank or above on each boss. And that's good as well because then you won't have to come back and clean that up. Now, you can't get an A- or above on simple difficulty, so this must be done on regular. The amazing thing is it doesn't matter when you actually go for these A rank trophies since you can fight the bosses at any given point. So don't think about it too much. If you're confident in your skills, then you can just go for it. If not, then that's fine as well. So I'll explain the A rank while we go along, but if you're not going for it, you can just simply focus on surviving with the tips that I provide. And just as a side note, as you see on screen, there's a few trophies that are miscellaneous that will just pop as you play the game. All other trophies will be included since this is a full walkthrough. Now, once you've found out what path you want to go on, let's get started. All right, so now we're going to fight the root pack, so make sure you have spread equipped. And the first fight is a potato, and you should be able to kill him with no problems as long as you're not a potato. So you'll notice he shoots balls of dirt out of his mouth and a worm. If possible, you want to parry that worm because you need three parries per battle to get an A rank or to go towards your A rank. You can also use a special or two on him if you'd like, just to get him down quicker. Now, the next phase will be an onion, and this onion cries. It will drop some pink tears, but I don't really advise focusing on parrying them since you've got the three parries off the first potato. And they're pretty inconsistent, and it usually shoots you up, so they're not really worth parrying. After that, you're going to be using spread for the majority of the fight. Same with the onion, you just use spread. And when the carrot pops in, you can throw three specials out on him. Keep attacking him with spread. He'll have this phase where he shoots from his third eye. He'll use that once, and then you'll have these projectiles coming at you, which are other carrots, and you can easily dispatch them with spread. He'll do this phase again where he shoots from his third eye, so just keep hitting him with spread. And there is a miscellaneous trophy that you can get here as well. The miscellaneous is for killing a boss with a super attack, and once you think he's low, which is normally as he's doing his third phase, 
um, if you were attacking them as I did on regular, then towards the end you can spam it and you're more than likely to get it. You can always go for that at any time, so it's no rush if you don't get it. Um, make sure you obviously avoid all projectiles, things like that, so you don't get hit, because that'll go towards your A rank. Same with using six supers. So there's an HP bonus, a parry bonus, a super bonus, and then there's the time as well. As long as you have the majority of those, you're more than likely going to get an A minus. After that, we're going to do our first run and gun level. Now, with these run and gun levels, there's some coins throughout the level that we want to collect. You can kill um, any enemies you go across. If you need to kill them, just use spread. It's pretty easy. You'll down them pretty quick. Um, you can also parry for some free supers if you manage to get one off. But your main thing you want to focus on is just survival, being that you only have 3 HP. So you can dash through, make your way through, following exactly pretty much how I do it. Some of the any, Your main thing when doing this one is you just want to focus on survival and collecting the coins. Later on, we will have to come back to these levels to get a trophy for not killing any enemy within the level. And I will show you how to do that easy. But for now... We're just going to be doing them to get the coins, so if you need to kill someone to survive, then by all means kill them. Now, you're pretty much towards the end once you make it to this part. Make sure you're collecting all the coins as you go. You can parry that butterfly as well if you need to throughout the level for any specials, but ultimately you should be able to get through that one with no problems at all. A rank does not actually matter on these. It doesn't go towards the trophy. But there is that trophy for not killing any enemies, which will be a pacifist run, and we'll explain that when we actually go to do it. After that, we're going to head to the shop, and we're going to buy a charm that will help you out, especially in the beginning levels. This charm is an extra heart, so that way you have 4 HP instead of 3. So make sure you equip that by pressing triangle and going to the charms tab. Alright, after you've done that, we can head to our next boss, which is directly southeast of the root pack. Now, what you need to do to A rank this boss, he's going to shoot some fists at the start of the battle, and you'll find some that are pink that you can parry. You want to try and parry as many of those as you can. He does do three of them, but if you do too much damage, then he won't do that again. So just try to get as many as you can. As you can see, he's going to do it again. So you can easily get three if you don't do enough damage. In most cases, you probably won't. So you don't have to worry about getting three your first try. Now, ideally, when you're up close, you want to use spread. And then when you're too far, you can use pea shooter. When you have the full cards down on the bottom left, you can use some specials to take out some of their health. Now once you've done enough damage, he's going to open his mouth and the other frog will roll inside of him. I believe that one is Ribby. Not too sure. Ribby and Croaks. So he'll start spitting out some coins. You can parry the switch to gamble and stop the slot machine. And it depends on really what you get. If you get red, you just have to dodge the flames like this. If you get yellow, there's a ball that comes out of them and you just have to dodge that and the ball. And if you get green, they're just platforms that you jump on, which is probably the easiest. So you'll see green next. You can just switch to pea shooter or spread if you're close enough. And they'll slowly start to get a little bit quicker, so you can just time your jumps and increase when you need to. If you did all that without getting under 3 HP, that'll add towards your A rank as well. It's time, HP bonus, parry, super meter, and skill level. And as you can see, we nailed all of those on that and got a perfect score. You can't get anything higher than an A plus on regular. You need to be on expert to get anything higher. All right, so another A rank knocked out. After that, you'll make your way across this bridge and go into this mausoleum. We're going to unlock our very first super art, which is amazing and does a lot of damage. In order to do a mausoleum, you have to parry all of the ghosts that are going towards the urn. If they make it to the urn, you fail. It's a lot easier than it looks. They only get a bit quicker as you go on. There's three of them in the game, and ultimately they're not too bad. 
We can also dash and parry the next one over like that. As long as you're going after them the moment they pop on the screen, then you can ensure that they're not going to make it to the urn. You should have no problems with it at all. They'll send a few different variants of ghost after you. Some are a bit quicker, um, and you'll see a bit more as we progress through the game. But just like that, we've got the victory, and we unlock the super art. I'll speed this bit up. She basically just shoots some stuff inside of you, and then it feels really good. And you've unlocked the new super. So we've unlocked super one. One of the best ones in the game, as it does increase your damage. So immediately press triangle and equip that in the super slot. After that, we'll make our way back past Ribby and Croaks, as well as the root pack boss and the shop. And we are going to fight Goopy Legrand. Now he's a very simple, easy fight. Overall, he's a very easy fight. And all you need to do is use spread when you're up close and you can dash under him when he's going to jump. And whenever he goes to do this punch move, you can actually duck under him, so that way you ensure that you're still doing a lot of damage. So keep doing that, ducking under him when you need to, and dashing if you need to do it quickly. Once he's going into his second phase, these three question marks will pop up, and you can get your three parries for the A rank. Then you'll immediately be able to use the special, and you can use the super on him. As you can see, that's a super one since it was with five cards. You can duck under his punching attack as well. And as you saw, there was a miscellaneous trophy that popped for the parries, like I mentioned earlier. But again, keep ducking under him, ducking under his punch ability, and using spread while you can up close. Once you finally deal enough damage, I unfortunately got hit right there because I was a bit too close to the hitbox you'll fight the Gravestone. Now he's pretty easy as well, you just want to use spread and your specials whenever you have them available. And on his third run by you, he will drop down on you, so you want to make sure you dash at the last second so that way you don't get hit by it. It's pretty forgiving too, as you can see I still didn't get hit right there even though I was a bit slow. Alright, so if you did that all how you should, you should easily get an A- minus or above on the ranking. And that's another boss down. Okay, next we're going to get a miscellaneous trophy for going under here, which is taking a shortcut. And then we will find the treetop trouble running gun level. Go ahead and start that one up. And again, you're fine to kill everything on the level. We just want to make sure we get to the end and survive while grabbing all of the coins. You'll wait for a pink one to come by so you can parry it to get the coin and then continue up the branch. And while you're making your way up, you can actually jump next to the woodpeckers. They don't have that big of a hitbox. Just be wary of that. Get the coin that's hidden at the bottom right there and then make your way up the treetop. Now these will shoot things out of their mouth while you're going up, so just try to be careful and grab the coin as you go up, and dodging all of their projectiles as well as killing these moths, I guess? I'm not really sure what they are, but kill them. Grab the coin off of that one and then you can dash over to it or wait for it to respawn. Make your way through the level. Collect this coin as well. It's easy to knock them away and then go down and grab it and dash over to the next one. Now we're right at the end of the level and a mini boss will come out. You can either try and kill him and do enough damage or you can drop down, take an HP loss and then jump over and get out. It's really whatever it's easier for you or whatever you feel most comfortable with. But if you've done that and grabbed all five coins, then we can progress with the guide. And again, don't worry about your ranks on the running gun levels, as it doesn't matter until the end when we go for our pacifist trophy. After that, make your way back over and go up past Goopy Legrand. Now you're going to learn a new mechanic that some of the fights use. 
you're controlling an airplane that you can shoot with R2, use your special with circle, parry like you normally would, and you can press triangle to shrink. You can also press R1 if I'm not mistaken to shrink depending on what feels more natural or easier for you to do. After you've done that, you can enter the building to the right, and that's Hildeberg. Now this boss does have a fair few phases, however they're fairly easy. You will get a few projectiles being shot at you, so just be wary of that. And whenever you see her puff up, it means she's going to dash at the front of the screen like that. So you want to move out of the way. And again, you can abuse that shrink ability to dodge. Since you're a lot smaller, it would be much easier to dodge the attacks coming at you. Some of those zeppelins will shoot out a pink bullet, and you can parry that for a free special. Dodge that ram that keeps randomly smashing you with his horns. You can easily just avoid him. He's not a, an issue or a threat at all. And then you'll go into the next phase. Again, you'll just deal damage to her as much as possible while avoiding everything coming at you, and then moving out of the way when she goes towards this left side of the screen. After that, we'll be in the next phase with these two cloud ladies, whatever you want to call them. And you can use a massive special on them if you do happen to have one. They'll send this little sun out at you that shoots lasers in a clockwise rotation. It may vary, so just be wary of where it's going to shoot and just focus on dodging that. You can parry anything that does come at you, any of those pink bullets, but other than that, just try to focus on dodging so you don't take damage. Once you get to the crescent moon phase, this is her final phase. You'll have some stars being thrown at you as well as UFOs. Now the red UFOs, they shoot a bit later and the yellow ones shoot early. So use that as your advantage to know if you need to quickly zoom forward or to step back. It's easier to zoom forward on the red ones and then step back on the yellow. Keep using specials as you build them up and sure enough you will defeat her. Her A- rank is pretty easy to get even if you don't parry everything as long as you get a lot of those stats um, how they should then you'll get an A rank. All of those things factor into it like time, your supers, just make sure you're doing everything you can during the fight while still surviving and making it to the end. After that we can make our way over here to the Cagney Carnation boss. Now we still have the same loadout, just pea shooter and spread with our super. You just want to be nice and close and use spread. When you see him charge down, he's going to go down. When you see him charge upwards, he's going to go up. So just make sure you're on the platform or down on the ground, whatever you need to be. And when he drops these seeds, you can find a pink one to parry. Keep using spread up close while taking out some of the plants while you can. The acorns are very easy to make them go a certain way. As you can see, he was charging up, so I went down to shoot him. But again, with the acorns, they go where you last are at. So if you, they're pretty easy to manipulate. Wherever you're at is basically where they're going to go, and then you can just leave that spot. The clouds will go straight and then under the platform, so very easy to dodge as well. Just be wary of what's coming at you on the screen. As you can see, another seed went down, and I parried that, so you'll notice a lot of things going on. He'll then go into this phase where he's wrapping the platforms and vines. And if you have a special here, I recommend using it. And then that way, any you build up from here on out, you can use just to deal extra DPS towards the boss. He's going to shoot some flowers out of his mouth occasionally. And some of these are pink and parryable. So make sure you try and get those if you are able to do so. And you can switch between spread and the pea shooter as you go. If you happen to get all of the bosses A- minus or higher rank, this will be your Sheriff Trophy as well. Again, you can go back and get the A- minus rank if you so please, but if you just want to go through the game right now, you can do them at the end. It's all depending on what you prefer. More practice doesn't hurt, so it's completely up to you. Now before we do leave this area and go to the next, next to this guy here, you will find a gold coin hidden between the trees. Make sure you grab that before you progress, and then make your way to the next aisle. Alright, so we've already made it to Inkwell Isle 2, and to our left immediately will be our next boss. We're going to fight the Baroness Von Bonbon. Try saying that three times fast. 
Now, overall, the boss is actually fairly simple. She'll have three mini bosses that come out and then you take on the main boss. So one of these bosses is the muffin and you can just go under him avoiding his muffin splatters from the side. Another one is the gumball machine, which you can dodge the gumballs. And then there's a waffle and a jawbreaker. As you can see, I got the jawbreaker next and a little jawbreaker will follow him after. And there's also going to be these jelly beans that start coming out on the bottom. So you wanna make sure you're not getting hit by them. And you'll notice one of them is pink occasionally. Make sure you get the parry if you're able to. If not, it's not a big deal, but try and parry them if possible. Now, next up, I got the waffle mini boss. Um, so the only other one is a bubble gum machine and he's very easy to dodge. He drops bubble gum balls from the sky and you can just dodge him. He's really easy. Um, other than that, again, keep trying to parry as much as you can. As you can see, I didn't get the parry, but it's more important to try to stay alive as opposed to trying to get that parry. After you've done your three mini bosses, the main boss will take control of this castle and it's going to start chasing you. But that's not it. She's going to start throwing her head at you as well. If you have five supers, you can quickly use it on the boss to get rid of a lot of her health. You can parry this peppermint that comes rolling by if you need to, but ultimately just focus on dodging the head. Well, as well as the peppermint, but it's very easy to dodge. Whenever you get some specials, you can use them on her as well. And then sure enough, you will get her down. Now again, all of these bosses are just on regular when you're doing the expert difficulty. Some of these bosses will change a little bit, but not very much. And we'll go over that when you're on the expert run towards the end of the guide. There we go, we've got another boss down. So immediately after that, you'll move upwards to this level called Funfair Fever. This is another run and gun level. And again, we're just focusing on completing the level. Now, as you go through this part with the trampoline, you'll eventually come across a pink balloon. If you parry that five times in a row without touching the ground or anything, you're going to pop a trophy called bouncing ball. So make sure it's five consecutive jumps and you'll also build up a special and that can be useful later on in the level. So make sure you're collecting the coins as you go. As you can see, there is one hidden up on top of the area back there with the dudes on the ball and now we're just going to switch to spread grab the coin here while dodging all of these make sure you don't fall off the platform you want to try to get through this with as much health as you possibly can so while you're avoiding the balls make sure you're also avoiding from falling off the platform you spread on those cannons to get past them and you parry up these bells to get up jump down and grab that coin if you get hit anywhere that's fine you just want to try to get through this now this part you can either use your special and kill him really quick or you can sacrifice a health point and glitch right through him and then climb up here. It just depends on if you have enough health to sacrifice. Now once you get up to the roller coaster part there's going to be these jumping pretzels. You can either kill them while dodging the ketchup, relish, and mustard um, or you can just dive right under but don't forget about that coin right there. So get the coin and as you make it towards the end there's going to be a giant wiener you want to kill this wiener as fast as you can or if you have hit points like for example i have three i could just jump right through them and take the damage uh, if you grabbed all five coins wonderful you can proceed if you didn't just make sure you go through the level until you get the five coins and we got an a plus on that one which is always cool it's not needed for anything so don't worry too much about that just get those coins and get out of there. Next up, I want you to go down to this guy and talk to him. He's going to let you know that he's added an upgrade to the airplanes. And now you can switch your weapons with L1 and you can use mini bombs. Those do come in handy for some bosses. After that, you can make your way over to Pork Rinds Emporium. Because we have 12 coins. So you want to buy Chaser. You want to buy a roundabout and you want to buy lobber so chaser roundabout and lobber and then you can leave his shop those will come in handy a bit later as they are used in a lot of the boss fights as well next we can go to the pyramid and fight jimmy the great now he's another airplane type boss 
You can chuck a couple bombs on them if you want and then back up. Now this first phase, it may be a bit different than you. You may get the Sphinx or you may get some jewelry that has pink diamonds that you can parry or you might get scimitars and one of the scimitars is pink and you can parry it as well. Try to get as many parries in the first phase as you can because that's going to grant you a full super. Now when you get to this area, I recommend breaking through them and then shrinking just to make sure you're not getting hit by either the saw or the pillars themselves because the last thing you want to do is lose health to something as silly as that. And it does happen, so don't beat yourself up. If it does, just focus on surviving. And if you're going for A+, plus or A-, minus, whatever rank for the trophy, just try and get that done. Now, once you get in this phase, right when he does that stretch move, you want to use your super so you can end this phase quickly. There's going to be some mummy ghosts coming out of there as well as some projectiles that he shoots out. And if you use that big super on him, you're going to end that phase incredibly quick. Just keep shooting him as he spawns in while he's doing his animation because you're just going to keep building up a super. You can use your super on him occasionally as well. He's going to shoot a few bullets and one of them is parryable. So dodge the blue ones and then parry the pink one. And now we have a full super again. You don't want to use it on him though because we can save it for the final phase to make sure we push through. But you can still parry if you need any more parries throughout the battle. Make sure you get your three. He'll go down pretty quick. You can use the occasional one super if you need to. Right away, if you have a full super, use it right on him. Pay attention to what pyramid is going to open their eyes. And then watch out for his little beam attack. And you can see it goes in a four directional attack. So try to pay attention to the pyramids while you're shooting him to dodge theirs and you will easily take him down. That's personally one of my uh, favorite airplane fights. I think he's actually pretty fun to fight. And there we go, we have another boss down guys. So just keep it up. We're making good progress on the game. That's going to open a new route. And that's his soul. We've got his soul contract. Next up, we'll go straight down to the roller coaster. Another fun fight here, but before we go into it, I want you to equip roundabout that we purchased, and then I want you to keep spread on. You can also keep super one and the one heart charm on, and now you can jump into the regular match for Beppy the Clown. Now Beppy's got four stages. At the beginning, you just wanna turn the other way and keep shooting roundabout while jumping, so that way you can make sure that you're spinning the ducks. You can pass through the ducks when they're spinning. However, if they're not, they can actually hit you and you will take damage. So you want to jump up occasionally so that way some of your roundabouts are hitting the ducks. You'll end that first phase really quick with roundabout and just jump over him when he charges at you. You then want to switch to spread and parry the beginning of the roller coaster. Now you want to avoid dodging the passengers as well as using spread on the dog balloons and trying to parry any pink dog balloon that you can. If you kill some, that's fine as well. Ultimately, you just wanna try and avoid taking damage. With spread, you're gonna end that phase really quick. And the second this horse comes out, I want you to use your special as soon as possible. You can switch between roundabout and spread, but ultimately you wanna try and get close and use spread. Roundabout's good if you feel like you can't really um, hit him at the moment or if the roller coaster is coming by it's a very good one to use to make sure you're still putting out damage that'll be his third phase down now we've made it to his final phase so here you want to stay alert and switch to spread and just start shooting upwards so that way you can start damaging him as soon as possible just keep using spread try and stay close and hopping towards him and jumping over the roller coaster as it comes by after the roller coaster passes by you're gonna see these guys here and they're gonna shoot a ton of baseballs at you. It can get a bit hectic, but once the roller coaster comes around again, he'll clear them. And as you build up another super, you can easily finish it off. You can also pop a trophy if you haven't done it yet, which is finishing a boss with a super attack. You can also, if you have a super early in that stage, you can use it to clear out the baseball guys so that way you don't have to worry about dodging them because um, it can get a bit hectic. Ultimately, just follow those tips and you will easily beat Beppy the Clown. 
All right, so after we've destroyed Beppy, we can make our way back towards the area of Baroness Bon Von Von Bon Bon Bon, and we can fight Wally Warbles. Now this is going to be another airplane battle. Um, it can be a bit hectic at times, but bear with me. So occasionally his head will turn into a hand and shoot three bullets in three different directions. Now when he shoots these eggs, if you're staying all the way to the left side of the screen, they will never hit you. So you only have to dodge the giant version of the egg. And when you gain a special, you can occasionally use that. And then you also want to make sure that you're trying to parry the little birds as much as possible. When you get a full super, make sure you use it on this phase with the feathers because you will end it much quicker and it may get a bit too hectic for you. Don't forget you can shrink your plane with R1 or triangle at any time to try to get through some of those tighter spots with the feathers. Thankfully we were able to end that phase pretty quick and we've already built up another super. You can use that on him as well to quickly end his phase or you can save it for his final phase. It depends on whatever one you're more comfortable with. He shoots a lot of parryable projectiles, so whenever he does that, just quickly parry because you're more than likely going to build up another super for the end anyways, or close to one. Next will be on his final phase. If you press L1, you'll switch to your bombs. I like to stay to the left side of the screen because you can see the projectiles from the right much easier. However, you want to make sure that you're not directly above the bird on the left because you can get hit by his pills. And then when he uses the pill, you want to make sure you dodge it when it splits apart. So there's only a few things you really have to pay attention to and you can shrink to avoid all of this. Keep using the bomb when you get a moment to and you are free to do so without taking damage and you will easily take care of Wally Warbles. That's another boss down and another A plus for the collection there it's going to open up a rainbow bridge and give us his soul contract after that if you go behind wally warbles level you can walk the back side of this mountain which is a nice little shortcut and then you can walk right back now the reason i did that is this donut npc is actually going to give you a coin for finding that shortcut so you have to do that and then come back in order to get that coin. And you do need all coins in the game for a trophy as well as buying all of the items. After you've done that, we can go into the second mausoleum within the game. And this will be another parry kind of challenge. So same concept, you just want to parry them before they get to the urn. Make sure you stay focused on which ones are coming out and you take care of the ones that are closer to the urn. You can utilize your dash as well to clear to the other side of the screen. And then you can even do it into a parry as well, depending on the setup. You can get your tea bags in there as well, if you want to. Now it'll also add a new ghost. This ghost spins in a circle and then we'll eventually get closer to the urn. Make sure you time it right to try and line it yourself up with the circle. So that way you can get a parry off on that ghost before they reach the urn. They'll send another one in towards the end, and if you're good enough, you can get a triple combo there and make sure you dispatch that ghost before she ruins it for you. After that, get your tea bags in. She's going to shoot you some stuff inside of you, and again, it's going to feel really good, and you are going to unlock your second super. This super is an invincibility super, meaning you'll take no damage when it's active. So it's pretty good for some cases. Now we can head over to Grim Matchstick's tower. And I want you to equip the Pea Shooter and Lobber. These two will help us immensely on this fight. And I also want you to have Super 1 and the Heart Charm still equipped. Those are our best in slot at the moment. Now the way he works is at the beginning of the battle he's going to shoot three rings. And at the very end of each ring is a parryable pink ring. Try to parry as much of these in the first phase as you can so you can build up that Super. He's going to shoot some fireballs while also bringing his tail from the bottom of the screen. Make sure you're dodging that tail. And then he'll also go back to rings, this time with four and the last one being parryable again. So again, parry as much as you can while still doing damage the whole time and dodging his fireballs. After that, he'll go into the next phase. You want to end this phase pretty quickly because it's a bit of an annoying one. 
The second he lays down and rolls out his tongue, you can start laying into him with some damage. Use the super on him. And you can even switch to lobber as well. You don't have to stay on pea shooter. And you can use lobber to basically um, take him out pretty quick. Now for his last phase, again, it's kind of preference. You can use the pea shooter or you can use lobber. Personally, I find lobber to be a bit more effective, especially since it shoots over his fire nine times out of 10. So you don't have to worry about accidentally shooting his fire and getting hurt unless you're super close like I was right there. Now, once he uses that fire ability, you wanna try and stay on the top level no matter what, cause he's gonna use it twice in a row. And then he'll go back to shooting the fireballs. Again, Lobber helps with making sure you don't break those fireballs, so it's pretty handy for that. And you may even have a super towards the end, so make sure you use that. If you were getting the A ranks as well on the way through that, you'll unlock the boss trophy. Um, if not, you can always go back and follow those tips to get an A rank. That is aisle two already done. That's crazy. We just flew through that. You guys are already feeling like gods of the cuphead and honestly just keep up the great work. After you leave that boss screen, you can go to the southeast down the stairs and you will find a juggler and he's going to give you a gold coin if you talk to him. Once you've done that, there's going to be a gold coin by this cart over here. Make sure you grab that gold coin and then we can do our final running gun level. But before we do that, we want to equip spread and pea shooter everything else can remain the same so pea shooter can stay on there from the grim fight now this one can be a bit confusing you parry the pink cards in order to change your perspective from the ceiling to the floor and once you get to this wall you want to try and deal out as much dps as you can there'll also be some floating kisses mouths at you i don't know what you want to call it guys don't don't break my balls over that one so just just make sure you damage him as much as you can and then you can go straight through his mouth without taking any damage now you come up to these bullet bill wannabe things and you want to avoid those because they shoot wannabe bullet bills grab all the coins as you're going through and try to make it after they shoot so that way you have a bit of time to dash through now this next part you can either play it really safe and kill the tubas or you can be like me and just be pretty damn reckless and try and leave. I did kill that tuba, however, and we make our way over parrying. I tried to do a jump dash, I missed, so I'm gonna take the one hit damage. I tried to do it again, I missed. I'm gonna take the one hit damage and that's fine. Eventually you'll come up to this final wall. If you have enough HP to sacrifice when you get to this wall, you can simply jump through the mouth and take a, take a hit and be done with the level. If you don't, you can try to dodge everything and then kill it so you can finish the level. You can definitely make it through that level with much more HP, but if you wanted to speed through it like myself, um, you can be a bit risky towards the end. But ultimately, if you're struggling, take your time with it and make sure you kill all of the enemies within your path. After you grab all five coins in that last running gun, we can make it to our final aisle. We are now on Inkwell Aisle 3, and the next boss is right at the start. Before we go into this boss, I want you to equip Chaser, and then I want you to equip Lobber. These two will be pretty vital in completing this boss. Now, with the first phase, there's going to be a Cop B that comes out and he puts out these little timer bombs. You wanna try and stand back as much as possible so you can get some parries. It is a bit hard to parry on these platforms because they're so close together, but if you're kind of far away, you buy yourself a bit of time to hopefully get a parry. As you can see, I'm trying to jump between the middle there to get that parry, but I didn't get it. It's not a huge deal if you don't get them. Go ahead and finish phase one with as many parries as you can get. And then with her next phase, she's going to start dropping down in random parts of the screen. If she drops down in the middle, you want to use lobber and avoid the bullet bill looking things. Jump down and then back up each time so you can avoid taking damage from them. And whenever she's on the left or right side, you want to switch to chaser. It's going to make it much easier for you to just focus on damage while you're dodging her attacks 
Anything that is pink, you can parry if you need to, so that way you don't take damage. She's going to the right side now, so again, we'll stay with Chaser. Anytime she's on the left or right, you definitely want to stay with Chaser. When she starts spawning these triangles, you can parry them. And if you stand on the flat side of each triangle, you won't get hit. It only shoots from the points. She's going back to the, the center, but this is because she's going to her final phase. You can definitely switch to Lobber and get a bit more damage on her before she switches into a giant airplane. And then you should have a full super. We're going to try and end this final phase as soon as possible. I definitely recommend Lobber. Just make sure you're far back to the side enough that it hits her on the little propeller on the front. And you can also use any specials that you happen to build up in the time being. If you get hit, don't worry too much. Just try to focus on damaging her. And if you did use a super on her, she should go down fairly quick. And that is another boss defeated. That's going to unlock a new route to the left. So we'll make our way down that new open route. And we're going to do another running gun level. Now I want you to equip the pea shooter and I want you to equip spread. Everything else can remain the same, but you definitely want pea shooter and spread. And we want to make our way through and collect all the coins. Now these guys will throw pickaxes at you that bounce back. So you just want to try and avoid them as best as possible and just take them down with spread. Again, we'll be doing a pacifist run later, so you don't need to worry about not killing anything. Right now, just focus on killing anything that obstructs your path or prevents you from collecting these beautiful coins. This one you have to drop and then dash in order to collect. Now, our next coin is actually down this lift. It's a bit towards the end, but you definitely can miss it. So if you miss it, you'll have to retry because we do want to collect all five coins. Every other shot that this little dragon shoots out is a parryable attack. So make sure you parry those if you need to or if you're able to without taking any damage. As you can see right towards the end, that coin pops up. So make sure on, you're on that right side of the lift in order to grab it in time. Now these you can parry to jump over, but it's much easier to just use the spread attack and kill them. You'll eventually see a plate statue. And you can see a coin right between that arch that's a bit after the plate statue. So make sure you grab that one as it's super easy to miss. Keep damaging the enemies behind you and then the line in front. Make sure these guys don't swarm up on you and then take them out. You're going to be at the final part of the running gun, which is arguably the easiest part. It's mainly just platforming, so just take your time with it. You don't have to sit there and spam the bullet thing. That's just kind of a habit. So don't worry if you don't do that. Just some simple platforming. There will be a coin about midway through. So make sure you're ready to collect that as there's a bit of fire blocking it. Ultimately, you should get to this part with at least some um, health. And if you have the invincibility super equipped, you can actually get away with a little bit of damage. Well, no damage. You're invincible. So you can get away with stealing those coins and getting out of that guy's lair. So that's pretty good. It's a good way to mitigate some damage and maybe alleviate some stress on you if you are struggling at that part. Congrats. That's another running gun done. We only have one left, which is amazing. That's almost all of the running gun levels completed. Now we're going to do Dr. Cal's robot fight and this one can be pretty challenging so don't let it discourage you. At the very start you want to switch to your bombs with L1 and line yourself up to where you're hitting his chest and his junk, his, his stomach. So you'll be hitting his chest and his stomach and that's going to make those easy to knock out and then after that you want to focus on the satellite dish on his head. And you can use either your normal bullets or the bombs if you prefer. I recommend just the normal bullets so you don't have to stand there up close. There will be some homing bombs that go after you. He'll be shooting some gold nuts and bolts. And also the arm that comes in shoots out 
uh, blue balls up and down. So there's a fair bit of thing flying at you. Make sure you utilize the tiny plane mode as it can pretty much save your life. Now this phase we're gonna end fairly quick. We're just gonna keep shooting at him when we get a chance. He goes up and down literally repeatedly and then you just wanna try to get rid of those as you go. Just keep shooting them as much as you can and it'll end that phase pretty quick. That phase is pretty short. Save your giant super for when he's shooting the diamonds. There's a lot of parryable attacks here. Obviously we want to parry as many as we can. However, if you feel like you're going to take damage, just don't risk it. It's better to play a bit defensive than offensive. He shoots a lot of parryable objects, so it's not a big deal if you can't get to another one. Ultimately, that's gonna build you up another five super really quick. That way you can use that ultimate super and just end him. You can also, again, go to tiny plane mode and keep abusing that. But as you can see, we already had another super. So if we wanted, we could have used that on him again as well. That last phase may seem rough, but honestly, once you get a decent maneuverability down, you can use tiny plane mode, easily navigate around him. You guys will have no problem with it. I believe in you. I do really like that fight, so hopefully it doesn't cause you too much grief, and hopefully you enjoy that fight as well. But, nevertheless, let's continue. We'll go back down where we came from and down these stairs. Now this is another cool fight that I personally like. We are going to fight Werner Worman. He is a mouse in a tin can. He's going to shoot these cherry bombs at you that disperse fire once they hit the ground. Try and dodge them accordingly and just use the pea shooter for the time being. Now when you see this catapult, he's going to shoot two things that are parryable. You can definitely hit both of them, but sometimes they're not lined up well enough to do so. So as long as you hit one of them each, then that's perfectly fine. You just want to keep using your pea shooter, trying to get through his first phase while dodging the cherry bombs. He may also do a move where you have to parry these springboards and jump over him. However, he didn't do it for me that time. So just be wary of that. Now that you have an ultimate super, you just want to save it for the final phase. So make sure you don't use it. And you just want to use spread up close because it's going to deal a lot of damage. You want to go down when he's up and then up when he's down. But you also want to be wary of the bottle caps on the side. After you deal enough damage, it's going to be phase three where the cat eats him. The cat's going to attack from left and right side and you just want to dodge the ceiling that's falling down on you. Once he summons the ghost, that's when you're going to use your special. You want to jump to either the left or right side of the screen and then use it so you can clear out the ghosts. And you can also mix in some little supers as you build them up. Make sure you're still dodging the top and bottom of the screen. You don't really need to focus on the ghosts. You can just avoid their projectiles and he should go down before they even need to die or anything like that after you've used your special it does more than enough damage to make that phase much easier that's another one of my top favorite fights i think it's pretty cool how the cat eats him and then he controls the cat from the inside they just they did so well on making all of these bosses unique and, and i hope you guys are enjoying the game I, I personally think it's amazing and a masterpiece and hopefully you're enjoying it and having a great time after that, we'll make our way down to this pirate ship in the bottom right. We're going to open up our equip menu and equip chaser. And we're going to leave spread on. And you can have super one as well with your normal heart charm. Once you're ready, we're going to take on Captain Briny Beard. Now there's a barrel on top of the screen and it does activate whenever you go under it. So sometimes it's nice to activate it so you don't have to worry about it. And you want to start the phase off with chaser so that way it just go straight to the boss and you, you can just focus on dodging projectiles and the barrel. Now he's going to shoot some parryable objects from the squid and once you get enough for a special go ahead and use that ultimate special. Keep parrying as much as you can. He may occasionally call in a shark which comes in from the left side. You just want to stay on the right side of the pier to dodge that attack. Also just be wary of the barrel the whole time while you're playing. It may be hard but just Keep an eye on it. Make sure you're mindful of where it's at. 
And as you can see, we've already built another special. You can go ahead and use it on him right away if you'd like. Occasionally, the boat will start spitting out cannonballs as well once you get further in the phases. You can keep using Chaser for the time being, dodging the barrel, the boat's cannonball, and the shark. That's why Chaser is really handy here because you can focus just on dodging. Now for his final phase, it's going to be the boat itself, and it shoots out these spinning projectiles which you can just dash past once they're above you. Now in his final phase, the barrel is still a threat, so just be wary of that. And whenever he's closed his mouth, he's charging that giant laser. If you duck, you will avoid that laser completely. And you can mix in some specials right here as well if you have um, some specials built up. But you don't have to. Also, if, it, if you're trying to play it safe, just worry about dodging everything, using Chaser to do the damage, and you will eventually end his final phase. That's another boss down for us guys. We've been getting through it. We're nearly there. Well, we're nearly there with all of the bosses, not necessarily the platinum. So hopefully you're not over it yet. Just stick with me. We'll get it knocked out. We're gonna go northeast to this next running gun level. This is our final running gun. And I want you to equip the pea shooter and spread. And you can keep the super on or you can keep um, the invincibility super on i do recommend the invincibility super on this one instead just because the final area may prove to be a bit hard and it might actually be the difference of you making it to the end of the level or not now when you see these pink fish at the beginning you want to try and build as much of a special as you can off of them while avoiding everything else you'll see another coin here that you just need to jump on one of the crabs to get to and then just keep making your way down. Any parryable fish on your way there, make sure you parry. There will be a lobster that comes sliding in. You just want to dodge him and collect that coin. He's going to row his way back here. So you want to jump up here and then jump over him. And then he goes to cast a lightning bolt. So just be ready to dodge that. And you can also parry the starfish that are floating up on screen as well for some added specials. Make sure you go inside the boat right there as there's a coin hidden there. And then you can proceed over the platforms with the octopus holding the wood floor up. And then you can start this phase by hitting the octopus's diamond. Whenever you hit that, it's going to shoot a cannonball forward. And there are some shrimp that fly out of the water that you can parry. And one of them you will want to parry or parry the actual octopus diamond to get a coin above. And if you parry those shrimp a lot better than I've been doing, because I'm about to die... I've ran this really terrible, but if you parry those shrimp and you get your special, you can use it to be invincible. However, I didn't have enough and I just kind of got lucky there. So definitely build up your special. It's going to come in handy towards the end if you find yourself struggling in that part. But with enough practice, you guys will easily smash it out. And that'll be your final running gun level. That'll pop the trophy for the running gun levels getting all the coins as long as you got every coin. If the trophy didn't pop, then you need to just make sure you went back and did all of the coins. Now we're on our final mausoleum. Much like the others, all you need to do is just parry the ghost. However, there is a fair bit coming at you and you can always combo your parry by just pressing X at the right time. Anytime there's ghosts bunched up together, make sure you just combo parry so that way you can ensure that none are going towards you. You'll eventually see a new ghost type, and when you actually parry him, he turns into smaller ghosts. So you want to make sure you take care of him as soon as possible since he splits into two, and that puts you at risk of possibly failing. You still want to make sure you get the circle ghosts as well as they can be a bit annoying to focus on. The easiest ones are the ones that come from the side. The circle ones may throw you off a bit. As you can see right there, I was pretty much about to fail. So you might get some close calls, but just keep at it. You guys will eventually smash it out. Make sure you get your tea bags in there for added morale. And smack all of these ghosts. Once you've done that, you're going to get our good old friend here to put some more stuff in you that makes you feel good. And you'll also get the Magician Lord trophy for unlocking all of the supers within the game. So that was our third and final mausoleum, and that's our third and final super to collect. 
Now that that's been done and dusted, we'll make our way back on the pier and go directly north. And we are going to fight Kala Maria. Another really fun fight that I like. Um, this is another airplane fight. And all you have to do is just start laying into her as much as you can. And some of the phases may be a bit different, so just be prepared for that. If you get the puffer fish phase, it's really good because there's a lot of parryable things coming at you on screen. And this will easily build up that three parries you need. And not only that, but some specials. I do recommend saving the specials as her first couple phases are pretty simple. If she gets this phase here with you and you have the ghost coming out, if you just stay in one spot and then as they charge, shrink and move to the top of the screen, you'll easily dodge those. Same with this part here. You can shrink and go through the water stream and dodge the electric fish. You just want to keep trying to damage her the whole time. And anytime she uses this phase, parry as much as you can. Now, once the electric eels come out, this will be another phase for her. So this is our second phase. She's going to turn you to stone and you just wiggle the analog to break free. You want to use your big super to knock all of those eels out as soon as possible. They're going to shoot a few things at you as well. So make sure you shrink when you need to, to easily avoid those. Since you use the big special on her, that's going to easily take her into her last phase. In her last phase, she'll have these green skulls that you want to avoid, and then occasionally she'll shoot out a stone gaze. You want to make sure you're not going to hit the stone spike pillars as well as the skull, otherwise it's going to make you lose more health. Make sure you abuse the tiny plane mode as much as possible to avoid all of that, and anytime you have a super, just quickly use it for some extra damage. She shouldn't really give you guys too much problems, and you'll have another boss down, so congrats. All right, after Calamaria, we can finally progress. All right, if we head west past the stairs that just spawned, behind this little shopping cart shack thing is another gold coin for us to grab. Then after that, we can make our way back down the pier, past the mausoleum that we cleared earlier, and we can go into Pork Rinds Emporium to buy some items. There's a few items I want you to buy, which is Charge, Smoke Bomb, Sugar, the Whetstone, and you want to buy Twin Heart, one of the best charms in the game, because it's going to give you an extra hit, which is amazing. After that, you can go ahead and leave his shop and make your way back up the main path up until the theater. We're going to fight our next boss, so we want to equip Chaser and keep spread on. And you can either use the Super 1 or Super 2. But you do want to equip the Smoke Bomb Charm. That'll make this part much easier for you. So you can kind of get through this boss without actually focusing on some of the mechanics. Now up close, you just want to be using Spread. And whenever she goes to charge at you to Smoke Bomb through her. And then you want to parry her heart kisses. So whenever those come out, make sure you parry them. You should easily get three before you push her into her next phase. Watch out for this attack as she comes falling from the sky pretty quick. And you can just dodge to the left or right to make sure you don't get hit by that. Smoke bomb makes it easier as well because you'll get some invincibility frames. Now once you push her into her next phase, she'll get taken away by that car and that hot guy. Uh, I didn't say it, you guys said it. Once you get into this phase, use your super and that will take quite a bit of damage on her and almost push her into the next phase. Just keep focusing damage on her with spread while avoiding the little toy mouse cars and the baby bottles being thrown from the window that the little shits are throwing at us. After a little bit more damage with spread, she should go into her next phase. Now this, you just want to be up close and you spread. Normally you would be breaking open the meteor to parry and jump over the wave. But since you have smoke bomb, you can actually dash right through the wave, which makes this much easier. And then you can allow yourself to just focus DPS and end the phase as soon as possible. Save your special. You don't need it for this one. You can just dodge the lightning bolt and you spread. After that, you'll be on her final phase. 
So you want to switch to Chaser for the final phase. You can parry any of the pink roses if you feel that you're safe to do so. But ultimately, as long as you're focusing on dodging everything and using Chaser, you'll be just fine to use a special and knock her out. You can jump over the umbrella, throw in some tea bags. Why not? As you can see, even though we got hit, we managed to pull off an A, which is awesome. That'll go towards the trophy. That's going to clear the route on the bridge. And we get to fight another pretty cool boss. Before we do fight this boss, I'm just going to need you to open up your equipment. I want you to equip Chaser and Roundabout. You can also go and equip the Twin Heart Charm. So that way you have 5 HP instead of 4. And then leave Super 1 equipped as well. Once you've done that, make your way into the battle. And the first phase, you want to switch to Roundabout and face away from the um, boss. This is going to take care of the eyes that come falling at you. And then whenever these pumpkins drop a pink brick, you want to just parry those. If they happen to drop it on these valves, it's going to push your cart left or right, depending on which one it hit. So you want to avoid that so you're not taking unnecessary damage. So keep using roundabout for that whole first phase and then parry the right valve. He should go down fairly quick with roundabout. And then you want to keep the cart in the middle for this next phase, at least at the start of it. Otherwise, you may get hit by the middle fist like that. I happen to know the hitbox, so you can just go to the side of it and then you can just keep dealing damage to him with roundabout try to avoid the hands try to knock those pumpkins down so they're not ruining where you're at on the trolley after a few hits with that roundabout he'll easily go down roundabout does the big dick damage as I would say now for this next phase, it's usually best to just be on the left side and quickly finish one of the faces off with a special, the ultimate special, and then you'll only have to worry about one face. Now the ghosts that come out, if you damage them enough, they're going to be a pink skull that you can parry, which is going to help you build up another special. You can also switch to chaser if you need to, and then that way you can just focus on dodging them and then doing damage. So, we're on our final phase already. Now that we're on the final phase, you just want to parry his tail, so that way you can expose his heart. You do want to be using Chaser, so that way you can focus on dodging the fireballs, as well as these fire rings that come out and try to hit you. Occasionally, the hatch will close. You'll have to re-parry the tail to open it. And using Chaser for this whole phase makes it much easier, because you can just focus on dodging while he's constantly being damaged. Keep dodging the rings, the fire, and opening the hatch until you finally get your beloved knockout. If you got an A- minus or above on all of the bosses previously, you'll get the Mare Trophy. Overall, he's not too hard of a fight. As you can see, I didn't even do that amazing, and I still managed to pull off an A. So you guys can definitely easily do this. You're much better than me. Go kick some ass. Defeating him is going to remove that guard from our path, and then we can enter the casino. Coming from Las Vegas originally, this is a pretty cool area. I like that it's a casino. If you go behind the dice on the left side here, there is our final coin. That should pop the high roller trophy. If you want to make your way back on aisle three to Pork Rinds Emporium, you can buy the final item, which is the coffee. And that's going to pop yet another trophy for buying all of his items. After that, we can make our way back to the casino. And we are going to fight a pretty challenging boss. But once you understand how it works, you'll get through it no problem. I want you to equip the charge shot, the spread shot, the twin heart charm, and the super one. And then when you're ready, jump right into it. All right, so King Dice isn't so difficult once you actually figure out how he works. That's the most difficult part of his fight. As you can see, he's going to spawn a die in the middle of the screen. Now, what you want to do is keep jumping 
until you can actually hit the number on the die that you want to hit. So right at the very start, I want to hit the number three. So I'm going to keep jumping. There's no time limit or anything like that. So please do take your time as it does, you know, take a bit of getting used to. So ultimately, I'm going to keep going and then I just keep jumping until I'm comfortable. And I think I'm going to land on that three or whatever dice roll I need. Now, if you are struggling with the boss and maybe you need a little bit more health, this is the ultimate layout if you get all three hearts because um, those are the spots we're going to be landing on. Now, you can keep hitting retry until they spawn like that, and that might also help you as well. This is actually my run where I kill him. So the first number we're going to want to hit is three. Once you get a three, you're going to land on this spot here on the board, and it's always going to be the cigar mini boss. Now, the cigar mini boss is pretty easy. He's going to shoot a fireball at you that spins, and you can easily walk back and forth to avoid it. Now during this fight there's also some cigarette demons in between the two ashtrays so as you're dodging his fireballs and then he goes to switch sides you want to make sure you dash across without actually hitting them otherwise you're going to get hit and he's very easy boss to not get hit on so you want to try to save as much health as you can for the final boss you'll know he's close to dying using the charge shot on him because you want to just keep using the charge shot you know holding it and then releasing it when it's full and once you're close to an ultimate super, that's when you know he's nearly dead. After that, you're going to spawn back in here, and then next we want to roll a 1. As you can see, that's going to put us on the part of the board that says safe. And then we can try and hit a 3. So take your time if you need to, by all means, there's no rush. Try and hit a 3. So you're going to go 3, 1, 3. And this is going to put you into an airplane mini boss. Now he shoots these boxes as well as there's a white hooded horse rider down below on the screen. You want to quickly go past him so he launches up, otherwise he's going to hit you. Now this boss does give you a lot of parable pink horseshoes to build up a special if you want. Um, however, he's very easy as well, so you can easily just keep shooting him until he's dead. Make sure you're going into small plane mode and dodging everything accordingly, trying to save as much health as you can for the final boss. He's really easy, you just focus on the gift box that he shoots out and the hooded rider. After that you're going to be back on the board with another die to spin and then you're going to want to hit one again and this will put you on another safe square. After that we can finally hit another three so it's going to be three one three one three and that's going to put you in this monkey boss now the monkey boss is actually just sort of a memory game and as you can see I have the memory of a goldfish now I'm not doing too bad but basically what you want to do with him is match a card it's going to give you a bit of time to do some damage on him now this boss is percentage based so you'll only kill him once you've matched all the cards and he'll only go back to that little I don't know what you want to call it, limp phase, where he's sort of hanging down like that. He'll only go back to that once you've actually done enough damage to get him to that point. Keep matching the cards, just avoiding him and using the small airplane mode to dodge if you need to. As you can see, it can get you out of some tight spaces. And then continuously keep matching the cards. Again, I'm obviously not very good at memory games. So if you um, have a really good sized brain, you shouldn't struggle on this guy at all. You just want to focus your damage on him. You don't want to really use your special because I want you to save your ultimate for the end right here. As you can see, I did unfortunately take some damage there. So that leaves me with a little bit less health when I'm going for King Dice. Now there is a trophy on King Dice to beat him with, it says without taking a hit, however it means with 3 HP or higher. So you want to be able to beat him with 3 HP or more. So if you need to have that perfect lineup of hearts at the beginning, it's going to basically give you an added boost to your heart count. A total of 6 HP as opposed to your normal 5 with the twin heart charm.
At the very end, go ahead and use your ultimate to quickly knock him out so you don't have to worry about him. Now you just need to finalize this last bit on the board in order to trigger the final boss, King Dice himself. You can roll a 1 to go on the safe, or you can roll a 3 to just go to the fin. If you do roll start over, you necessarily don't have to hit retry as you can just roll back the way you came. Now these cards are parryable and you can parry the same card multiple times. If you're not very good at parrying the cards, I will show you a bit of a trick on the expert mode when we go to him. Um, and you can fast forward ahead to expert using the timestamps as well if you'd like to see that method. Um, however, if you just parry the card multiple times, you should be able to get through it much easier. It's overall not too bad as long as you don't mess up like I did. As you can see, I still have 3 HP. I just used my ultimate to try to quickly knock him out. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, so I have to do one more dodge of cards, which I managed to pull off. And we've just now killed him while we have at least 3 HP. That's going to unlock Casino Knight for killing King Dice and the Rolling Sixes trophy. Keep doing that method until you're able to kill him without, you know, losing more than your final 3 HP. You want to make sure you have at least 3 health points to get that trophy. Again, just take your time with it all. There's no rush when you're rolling the dice, and you'll soon learn what works best for you. Now, immediately after that, unfortunately, we're going to jump right back into King Dice. There's a miscellaneous trophy that we'd like to just get knocked out here, so we don't have to worry about King Dice for a little bit. And you want to do your 3-1-3 like normal all the way until you get to this horse boss. But this time you want to actually focus on trying to kill this boss while in your small plane mode. This is a miscellaneous trophy to kill a boss while you're a small plane. You obviously don't have a long range for the bullets when you're small. And you also do less damage. So it may feel like it's going to take a while. You may get hit a fair bit as well, but you shouldn't overall struggle on it. You just mainly want to keep your eyes peeled on the gift box like normal and then the white hooded riders that are going by to make sure you're not getting hit. Sometimes you may get cornered like I did. I kind of cornered myself. I was a bit of a bad spot um, and that will happen. You can just keep trying until you get the trophy. It's, it's overly not hard and maybe it just might take a few attempts. So as you can see, we're still just pelting on him. We used to do the big dick damage. Now, not so much, but as long as you just stay really close, stay mini the entire time, because it's also going to help you dodge through small areas, and then that way you don't have to worry about getting hit. And it doesn't matter about your HP so long as you don't die, so you really just need to survive long enough to kill him with the small bullets. He's a pretty easy boss overall to dodge, so this is why it's um, a boss I'd recommend to do this trophy on. Even though <laughs> I'm not doing a good example for you guys of me doing the run. But as you can see, you could be as bad as me at this game and still get this trophy. The great news is, once you do get that trophy, you don't have to fight the rest of King Dice. You can actually just press options, go to exit to map, and tell him to go... Uh, so the next boss is actually going to be the final boss, and we will be fighting the devil. Now, the loadout I want you to have is charge, spread, super one, and the twin heart charm for the extra two HP. Pretty much the same one you had for King Dies. Now, when the devil asks you this question here, you want to say yes. He said something about subscribe to Bushido Cypher, something like that. So just hit yes, make sure you click subscribe. And when you do that, that's going to pop a trophy for giving up your soul to the devil. So we basically sold our souls. After that, you'll load back into your game, go right back to the devil, and that time you want to choose no. So basically, you'll be in the devil's boss fight. He will do this move where, as you saw there, the arms will go from the side of the screen. You wanna jump and dash at the very last possible moment. The dash is actually gonna buy you that bit more of time that you need to not get hit by his arms. So it's gonna pretty much just buy you enough 
to dodge those attacks. As you can see, I jump and then dash, and it doesn't hit me. So very last minute, that's just how you dodge that one. Occasionally, he's going to spawn either flames or balloons, and there's going to be a parryable one out of those as well. So you'll see a pink fire or a pink balloon. Now, when he does this dragon head thing, you can go under the top of his head really quick as long as you're over to the right a bit. You can crouch down and continuously shoot him with spread, and it will not hit you. You can use specials throughout the um, phases if you feel that that might get you further in the boss fight. There's a lot of things to parry, a lot of damage to output as well, so ultimately you're going to build that special up extremely fast. Now after his first phase, he's going to jump out of his skin and jump deeper down into the depths of hell. He'll have these axes that go around in a circle. They're really easy to dodge, and there'll be some poker chips falling from the sky. Just be wary that you're not going to get hit by any of the poker chips or the axe itself. Occasionally he's going to shoot out a parryable wax ear bomb. And if it's on the left side, you can completely disregard it. However, if it is on the right side, I recommend parrying it for the extra super, but also so that way you don't take any unnecessary damage. As you can see, we have another super built up. We're not going to use it on this phase just yet. After this part, he'll go into another phase where he summons these minions. And what I want you to do is once the minions are out, you can go ahead and jump up and shoot it to the side. Doesn't matter what side you shoot it to, as long as you take one of them out just to make it a bit easier for you. Now you should be using spread the whole time and you'll be able to push him in his last phase very easily. There's only going to be one platform and he's going to be crying these parryable tears. So you want to land on them to jump back up onto the platform, and then dodge the poker chip. He has hardly any health in this phase, so if you have some supers, you can use them to quickly knock him out before you die, especially if you find yourself panicking. That's going to give you two trophies, especially if you are able to get the A- rank or higher in the area, which I know you'll be able to because you're already a cuphead god, and I don't know if that's because of the guide or just because of how damn good you are. After we kill the devil... We can make our way back to the running gun levels. Now we're going to do our pacifist run, so I recommend using the invincibility super and the twin hearts charm for the extra HP because you're going to need it. This will give us 5 HP to run through the level. As you run through the peer level, you want to make sure that you parry all of the pink fish. That's going to build up your super, which will come in handy towards the end of the level. Now you don't want to be shooting at any point throughout these levels because we're going for our pacifist run, which is to not kill anything if, if you're struggling on what pacifist means. So pacifist, we are not killing anything. Parry slaps do not count as a kill, so slap away on those pink objects and fish. Make your way through just casually dodging everything as you go. If you take a few hits, don't worry too much. It's not a big deal. The only real hard part of this level is the very end. You can dodge that lobster pretty easy. And then same with these guys here. Unfortunately, the lightning bolt did kind of screw me over there, but that's all right. We've made it to the end of this area with four health, and that's plenty. As you can see, we almost have a super as well for the invincibility. So when you get to this final phase, you want to obviously parry slap any of the shrimp that you can, um, and then dodge the other shrimps that you can't parry. Hopefully, you'll be able to build up a super fairly quick if you haven't yet. And if you find yourself taking too much damage, you can always pop that whenever you're ready. I got extremely lucky and was dodging these quite easily. But I do recommend using the super if you're messing up or you're struggling towards the end. You'll know you're close to the end once you see that other building in the background. And as you can see, we can pop the super and just ensure that we make it to the end of the level nice and easy. Now, the ranking we want to make sure that pops up is a grade P for pacifist. Get your mind out of the gutter. Now, we are doing all six run and gun levels. I'm doing them from the hardest to the easiest, basically. Um, we're at least doing the two first hardest ones just to get them out of the way because those are the only ones that will really cause you some trouble. The next one we're going to do is Rugged Ridge. This one, you kind of need to understand the hitboxes, and there's multiple ways you can go about it. You can dash under him like I did, 
or you can step next to him if you're not, you know, pretty much in kissing distance. That's a good way to put it is um, kissing distance if you want to jump over him. And then there's also that lion head there that you can jump over. Now, that's a pretty difficult jump. So if you don't make it, don't beat yourself up. You'll be able to get through just fine. That last guy, you can jump right next to him, make out with him a little bit and then jump over and then dash away. Next up, you'll be on that moving platform with the dragon and these mud monsters, or whatever you want to call them. You just want to make sure you don't get yourself cornered, trying to dodge the mud men as well as the dragon's fire until you get to the very bottom. Then you at least know you made it. You do have 5 HP, so you're able to mess up a few times. Now, what you want to do here is once they spit, that's when you want to parry the wall and jump over it. You can jump over this line as well. Once he's done roaring or whatever he's doing, you can just jump right over him. After that, once that wall starts spitting, you can do a parry to get over yet again. And then this final part is just like it was before. Just some basic platforming. So once you do that, you'll have another pacifist rank. And with that, you have two of the hardest running guns in the game done, and you also are one third of the way done with the running guns. So now we can make our way to the second aisle, and we can do the two running gun levels there. We're going to go ahead and start on the Funhouse Frazzle to begin with. Now this one you can play pretty risky. You can dash up forward and then dodge the duck by switching the gravity to the ceiling. If you dash your way to the wall in time, you actually can skip that entire phase of another duck coming out. What you'll do right here is you'll wait on the bottom until the next row of cars come out and you can dash over them without taking damage and run through the mouth. If you do take damage there, it's not a big deal, but it is good to try to get through that part without taking damage so you can kind of save yourself a few mistakes to be made in the later part of the levels. Dodge the wannabe bullet bills and then make your way through to the tubas. You can dash through them if you hit anything. Don't worry about it too much. You do have 5 HP, but try not to fall or take damage like I'm doing. As you can see, I am careless as hell on this level, so you can suck super bad and still make it to the very end with 2 HP at least. Once you see that sign that said, uh-oh, he's gonna stick his tongue out, you wanna jump through the mouth and you have another level completed. So that one you can do fairly recklessly as long as the beginning part you give yourself that extra HP by not getting hit by the cars. If you time it right, you'll dash right over them and walk right through the mouth like I said. And that'll be another easy pacifist run for you guys. And we'll be on to our next run and gun. So we'll make our way past the Baroness near the Donut Girl NPC to go to the Funfair Fever run and gun. You remember these balloons from earlier? Well, this is a wonderful time to use the pink balloon again to build up a special. We want to slap it five times, maybe six if you're feeling a bit feisty, and then get an ultimate ready for a part coming up real soon. Continue through the level, dodging the clowns on the ball, the weird little wizard things, the platforming bit here. Right here at the very start of that, you want to activate your super, Dash through and then make your way through the cannons and you should make it directly through as your super ends. You want to literally do that at the last possible second and then you can sacrifice an HP when you get to that mini boss and dash right through him. As you can see I still have 4 HP. You can dash under the pretzels. Just don't dash off the platform like I did. And don't dash into the pretzel. 
It helps to dodge things. Don't do what I'm doing. So as you can see, dodge through. And then if you make it here with extra HP, you can just jump through and take a hit and beat the level. If you only have one HP there, go ahead and cry. I mean, hit retry and then just do it again because you'll easily get it the next time because you were just that close. That's another pacifist run and that puts us two thirds of the way through for the pacifist trophy. We've got two more running guns and we will head to aisle one next and knock those ones out. If you're still following the guide, I think you're pretty awesome. All right, so we'll go past the ax head NPC and we're going to the treetop trouble running gun level. Now through here, you just want to kind of take your time. You don't have to be a bit reckless like I'm dashing through. You can definitely take your time making sure you dodge all the ladybugs. At least that's what I think they are. And as you can see, that's probably the hardest part in this tree trunk is that bukkake of them that comes out. And then after that, you can just make your way up. You want to watch out for the projectiles that the tree trunks are shooting out. But you also want to watch out for the flying enemies. Overall, this part's pretty easy to dodge as long as you're pretty much, you know, aware of your surroundings and what's actually going on around you. At the very end here, you can try and dash over, but it's not going to work, so we'll take a hit. As you can see, I've made it all the way here to 4 HP until I messed up. That's still fine. You can dash through. It's not a big deal. As long as you have 1 HP for the very end, when the mini boss comes out, you'll be fine. So don't beat yourself up if you make plenty of mistakes. Then you can just jump right through them, give them a little tea bag, and that's another pacifist done for you. All right, guys, we have one pacifist trophy left, and then we pretty much solve world world peace. It's it's attainable right here. We just need to do the forest follies. Make your way through the beginning, dashing and avoiding these sunflower enemies. As you go through, you want to try and parry as many things as possible because it's going to come in handy towards the towards the end of the level, basically. You want to just parry all those spike balls you can, any of the pink clouds, anything you can as long as it's not going to jeopardize your health. You can take a few hits though as well, so don't worry too much about that. You can farm a pink cloud right here between the mushrooms. Just watch out for the purple ones and the plethora of enemies there. Now to get over that machine, you want to jump up and activate the special right before the machine. It's going to give you a hop and that's going to give you that nice little quick tea bag because you just got the pacifist trophy. That's it guys, pacifist is done. Now for the remaining trophies. And I think you guys are ready for this. It's time to defeat all the bosses again, but this time on Expert. Now for anyone that just needs a certain boss on Expert, I've made this lovely boss index for you to just jump forward to whatever boss you need, and that way you can learn the strategy required to beat that boss. So next up, we are going to tackle the Expert mode and we will easily slam this out because you guys are now gods of Cuphead. Don't lie to me, you're gods. Now first up, we've got the root pack. That's the loadout I want you to use, the pea shooter spread, super one and twin hearts. And we're also gonna get our first S rank because there is a trophy to get one S rank and this is the easiest boss to do it on. Parry the earthworm at the beginning and then the second one will come out a bit faster. So you actually wanna jump forward and parry it with the timing pretty precise on that so that way you can hit the worm. Keep shooting him as much as possible to get him down quick and you should get him down before he shoots probably more than five of those waves of mud balls. You can use the super on the onion to quickly knock him out. Then I want you to switch to spread and be nice and close to him. Just keep wailing on him and surely enough dodging the tears and he'll die. After that, you can keep using spread, already aiming upwards where the carrot's going to spawn in. Using spread to quickly take out the carrots that are flying at you, so that way you're not taking any damage. 
ultimately it's easy to just use spread to build up a giant super again because as you can see we almost have a full super once you have a full super unleash hell on him keep shooting spread and sure enough that should kill him mm -hmm. give him some tea bags because you just got your first s rank on expert mode now it's only possible to get an s rank on expert mode so if you're trying this on regular don't as you can see we've nailed all of the requirements we've got an s that's beautiful next up we are on goopy legrand and this loadout is the chaser spread super one and twin hearts all right so goopy here not much has changed he's a bit faster on expert um, but ultimately he's much of the same as he was before for phases one and two you mainly just want to use spread and just focus on dodging him like you did on the regular difficulty so you can still crouch down and dodge that even if it looks like it hits you the hitbox on that is still not going to connect with you which is good keep going until you push him into a second phase and then make sure you parry those question marks again you'll know he's going in his second phase when he does that animation quickly parry those and then you can go ahead and use your special as well and try to take out some of his HP right at the start of the phase which is nice again you're just going to continue using spread doing as much damage as possible while dodging him now the beautiful thing about expert you don't have to get a, a good rating or anything like that your main objective while doing expert is to just try and survive and you have 5 HP to do so now while he's staggered you can keep shooting him to build up some special before his third phase in his third phase you just want to use chaser so that way you can just focus on dodging only and that way you don't have to sit there and try and aim as well you can switch between the two if you feel needed but honestly for the most part just stick with chaser it's a lot less work eventually you probably build up another super go ahead and let that loose on him unfortunately i took damage there so it's better if you can do it after you just dodged him so that way you're not leaving yourself vulnerable but after enough hits with the chaser he's gonna go down and that'll be another boss on expert knocked out for you next up we'll be doing the hildeberg boss and that's the loadout there is just the twin heart charm that's all you need since it's an airplane boss all right so for hilda on expert basically the main difference in expert is there's going to be more of the little minion planes that spawn the boss's speed will be a bit different as well and there's also going to be a lot more of the green planes that appear you do want to parry as much as possible in phase one so that way you can use any super whenever it's ready that bull phase that you found in the regular difficulty has been completely removed in expert and all that remains is that archer phase or the twin phase depending on what you get so in the far archer phase you want to use your tiny plane mode to avoid any kind of damage that may be coming at you especially with all the minions as well uh, the twin phase isn't too much different um, you only really need to pay attention to which direction that solar flare kind of attack is directing itself. So here we are in the archer phase. Again, you can abuse the mini plane mode to try and dodge all of that because you're going to have a bunch of shit flying at you on this fight. So definitely want to utilize the small plane mode as much as possible. You can throw out some supers here and there, get some parries as much as you can. If you miss any parries, it's fine. It's just ultimately going to help you get the boss down in the long run. So if you can get them, great. If not, just focus on dodging and doing a bit of damage here and there. Now, I just saved up for an ultimate super, and I'm trying to save it for her final phase since I think she's nearly in that. And then there we go. I see her do the animation. Once I see that she's switching into her final phase, I'm going to do the big dick damage and use my super on her. I'm going to back up since there's going to be a lot of stars flying at me on screen. And just a quick reminder, the red UFOs shoot a bit late and the yellow shoot a bit early. However, there are so many that it feels like you just keep getting shot at. 
You can try and parry some of the stars if they are in a convenient spot for you. And then you just want to keep using your super whenever available. As long as you just focus on dodging and then putting out a bit of damage here and there, you should be fine. Now this is one of the hardest expert bosses that you'll be fighting throughout our expert run. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it. Um, at least not, you know, your first try or anything like that. Just keep trying and you will eventually kill her. Alright, after that, we can move on to our next boss, which is the Cagney Carnation. You want the roundabout, spread, super one, and twin hearts equipped. And at the start of the fight, you can jump up on the platform, face away from the boss, and start using roundabout. Now, they're going to be dropping seeds down from above, and if you see any pink ones, you want to try and get some parries off early for these um, phases. He'll do the seed spraying quite a bit, so try to utilize that to get some special built up. Keep using roundabout so that way you can focus on dodging and then shooting behind you. Once you get a full super, go ahead and use it on him to take a fair bit of his health away. And then you can go back to using roundabout and then you can even go up close and use spread. You can switch between the two as long as you're dodging the projectiles that he shoots out and you're dodging him when he goes up or down on the platforms. Shortly after you use your super, you should be able to knock him into this phase pretty quickly. And then you can do some parries as well over some of the pink flowers that he shoots out. Again, we're just focusing on surviving. So you don't have to do any kind of ranking runs. Once you get another super built up, go ahead and quickly use it on him. Try to do it, you know, in a spot where you're not vulnerable like I did. Um, but again, we're just trying to survive long enough to do this. And towards the end, you can even use some supers some of your basic supers to just try to finish him off because after another big special he should be pretty low just keep doing that you will kill him there's not too much to really worry about with him on that one uh, you're mainly just looking out for parries to just keep getting yourself those supers nice and easy next up we've got ribby and croaks i want you to get the pea shooter spread super one and twin hearts now in the first phase, the attacks that the frogs do will actually be happening simultaneously. So I want you to use spread, try and parry these fist attacks while avoiding the fireflies. I think that's what they're supposed to be. I don't know. I'm not a zoologist. Try to parry as much as you can while just focusing your spread on them as well. Try and dodge all of the fists going under them, whatever you find easier. And then once you get a big super, go ahead and use it to deal a shit ton of damage in the first phase. After using that special, you can still parry some more fists to build up specials throughout the fight. Um, and then switching back to spread. So you can do a bit more damage and then pea shooter if you need to. You can kind of swap between the two, even for supers, whatever one you feel that you want to use. Um, but yeah, you just want to... That was some pretty epic gamer move dodging right there. I'm just going to say that right now. And it probably happened on accident, but I'm going to take it. After that, we'll get another super for his second phase here, which will do a shit ton of damage. This one is much like the first time you did this, except for he shoots his fist at you again, um, which is a bit different. But honestly, for the most part, it's just like our regular difficulty. So try to treat it as such and you'll get through it. No problem at all. Keep using spread on the toad to the right. Eventually, he'll open his mouth and swallow that frog. Now, the slot machine is a bit luck-based because it kind of depends what you can get. It's also a lot faster. As you can see, I got hit by two coins um, because I was a bit impatient there. Now, the worst one to get is this one because it can kill you pretty quick. You have to be re really observant, and I recommend hugging the left side of the screen to give you enough time to react. The easiest one would obviously be the snake, and that way you can just hopefully get that one every time. I, I hope you do, because right here, you guys can see that I am not having the best of luck. The yellow one's not too bad either, though. You can just run towards the back of the screen and then go forward again. And as long as you have a good rhythm, you should be all right. I did get hit at the end, but again, we just need to survive. Unfortunately, that last coin did hit me. Um... And I did get the fire phase again. So hug the left side of the wall if you get it and just avoid everything. Again, we're just trying to survive. 
you can try and cast some specials if it's safe to do so. If it's not, I recommend just sticking to your pea shooter. That's perfectly fine. It deals more than enough damage. And before you know it, you will have Ribby and Croaks defeated on Expert. And then we can move on to the Baroness Von Bonbon. Bon. And that loadout is Spread, Chaser, Super One, and Twin Hearts. You can pause this at any time if you need to to set up your loadout. Now again, the bosses that come out in this one are random. The Jawbreaker now has two little mini Jawbreakers. And there are Jelly Beans right away now instead of only in the second phase onwards. I've noticed if you use the Chaser mini special or whatever you want to call it, just your normal X attack, it actually kind of creates a shield on you. So hopefully if you mess up at all, you know, you can kind of avoid getting hit. Might be worth using occasionally, just keeping it active. And then you can go ahead and keep pairing the pink jelly beans. The waffle's relatively the same. You can just use chaser to stay back and focus dodging to do damage. He just splits apart two separate times instead of just one. It might throw you off at first, especially if you're used to the regular difficulty, but just keep at it. You'll easily adapt. And I recommend swapping between chaser and spread, depending on what situation is a bit more suitable for what, or if you need to focus more on dodging, you can switch to chaser and go from there. All right, so next up we've got the muffin. Dude, I think I called this a muffin earlier. It's a cupcake. Like, I think I did it just now, <laughs> but I think in the guide, I sw I'm having a flashback where I called it a muffin. Pretty sure it's a cupcake. If you get the cupcake, just use Chaser. Stay away from him, far, far away from him. I can't stand that asshole. So just Chaser, stay away, he'll instantly die. And then, well, not instantly, but you know what I mean. And then you can use your ultimate super on Baroness to get some good damage on her. Now her final phase actually has her throwing two heads. So the easiest way is to use Chaser and then focus strictly on dodging. If you're doing that, then you can hopefully just down her with Chaser since it's a homing attack and you can focus more on dodging while you're actually still being able to do damage. I find her a bit challenging, but that's just me personally. Um, but again, we only need to survive. We don't have to get a good rank. So as you can see, I did pretty terrible, but Chaser is amazing and you can just keep dodging, run all over the place and eventually you'll do enough damage to kill her. You can also parry the peppermint there if you need to. But ultimately, Chaser is going to be your go-to for that fight there. It just gives you more time to focus on dodging, and that way you can survive. Alright, next up, we got one of my favorites, Peppy the Clown. I want you to get Spread, Roundabout, Super 1, and Twin Hearts. Now, this boss is pretty much exactly the same as your regular difficulty um, and that's fine because I, I love his fight I think it's insanely fun but in round one you do exactly what you did before try and parry that duck if you can the pink one of course um, and then just keep using roundabout in the first phase you can start throwing a couple roundabouts up for when he comes out and then you can swap to spread you want to parry the dogs if you can and for this phase I actually recommend going on the roller coaster using roundabout then you can switch back to spread. So spread when you're not on the roller coaster, and then when you are on the roller coaster, use roundabout. It works wonders for this part. And then try to get as many parries as you can to build up some supers. But as you can see, roundabout will deal with the, this phase just super quick. Roundabout is amazing right here. Switch to spread. Immediately once the horse comes out, I want you to use your ultimate special, and that way we can try and burn down this boss as quick as possible. After you've used the special, just switch to spread and try and deal as much damage as you can. If you're on the roller coaster, you can use roundabout again, because at least you'll be doing some more damage to him, and you may even defeat him there. Once he's back down and the roller coaster's gone, you can switch back to spread and then alternate between the two. So on the roller coaster, roundabout, not on the roller coaster, spread. It's actually that easy. Now we're going on the final phase. Do 
just continuously use spread right at the start. You don't need to switch to anything else. You want to try and build up a super before these baseball guys come out. As you can see, I'm so close to getting one, so that's what I'm kind of aiming for. And even if I get hit, I don't care. I'm going to use it so that way I can clear a majority of them out and then the roller coaster can finish them off. After that, again, keep using spread, focusing on the boss, trying to dodge these guys. And honestly, after getting another special off on him, he should easily die. It's a nice, fun, easy one for you. And then we can move on to Jimmy the Great. So Jimmy is another plane battle, so all we need is the Twin Heart Charms. Alright, so there is a fair bit that has changed. You'll notice right off the bat in Phase 1, there's going to be a shit ton of stuff flying at you. Um, but now it's a lot more projectiles than in the regular difficulty. So abuse that mini plane mode to dodge them. And then stay a bit low. You may get a different projectile part than I did. Uh, but ultimately, the concept is the same. Try not to get hit. Next up, with the pillars, it's going to go by much quicker. So what you want to do is try and get them down quick and then go to the other side of the screen. You don't want to go too fast in case you're going to rush over to the side of the screen that you can't really see, and then you're going to get hit by a saw blade. So take your time. Abuse the little mini plane mode. It comes in handy for those tight spaces that you kind of just need to inch away through. And once you get to this phase, when he comes out of the sarcophagus, use your ultimate special to blow him up because you want to end this phase as quick as possible. There's going to be a lot more mummies coming out that can be distracting. And ultimately, the best way to do it is use the little plane mode, go to the bottom of the screen, and then come back up, get, get a couple more hits on him. It shouldn't be too long if you used an ultimate on him. And as you can see, we've knocked him out in that phase. Now in his next phase, there's a bit of an animation, so you can keep wailing on him to build up some special. And this guy right here will also shoot objects or projectiles that are parryable. So keep an eye out for those. Try not to get too close, and you want to use your mini plane mode to dodge right here because there's a fair bit of stuff on the screen. And since the bullets are shooting up and down as well, he's kind of got you in a restricted spot. You can definitely use your super here if you feel a bit uncomfortable with the spot or a bit overwhelmed. Because um, you can easily build another special back up for the final phase. As you can see, I'm not overly confident in this phase, but I do get by. So I'm going to save my special for his final phase. That way I can make sure I make quick work of it. At the very start of the phase, we will smash the ultimate right into his face. And then as you can see, we want to watch the pyramid still because that's where it's going to shoot from. Now the pyramids will shoot in a sort of cross formation. So you just want to make sure you're in one of the corners and just keep wailing on the boss and that will be the end of that one. All right, next up, we've got Grim. You want to get the Pea Shooter, Lobber, Super One, and Twin Hearts. Now, the major difference in this one, you will notice the clouds are actually going towards Grim. You want to dash away when you're getting too close, and I recommend using Lobber to end Phase One a lot quicker. He's still going to do that ring move, so you can get some easy parries from that, which will build up your Super, and you can go ahead and throw one or two in the first phase as well because we can build up the super very quickly on this fight. It may feel a bit harder to dodge all of these things coming at you since it's pretty much bringing you into the boss, but just do it nice and slow. Dodging the fire as well as the tail coming up from the screen, just make sure you're observing all ends of the screen. And again, parrying any of these rings that you can to build up a nice easy special. Sure enough, you will go into his next phase. And immediately you want to start that phase with a special. And this phase is actually pretty easy with Lobber because the clouds are going the opposite direction. And you can easily dodge these fireballs while still using Lobber. And I actually found it, I kind of find his expert um, fight much easier than the original. Or than regular difficulty rather. 
Next, he'll be in his final phase. He's going to shoot more of these little fireballs that break apart. You want to try not to shoot them. That's why lobber is a pretty good one to do because usually you won't shoot them. I'm just super bad and I shot like every damn one on the map. Um, you'll have another super. Make sure you use that whenever there's a time you can and it's safe to do so. I recommend staying on the top clouds just so that way you don't get hit by the flamethrower and using any other mini specials as you get them throughout the fight. Sure enough, you will kill Grim. You guys will do this no problem. You're better than me. Kick some ass. Next up is arguably one of the hardest bosses in the game. On Expert, if not the hardest, and it's Wally Warbles. We just want to get the Twin Heart Charm to give us that extra HP boost. Now, if you remember on regular difficulty, we could stay on the left side of the screen and it was a safe zone. That's not the case anymore because now the egg is going to break in four different ways. So you want to kind of stay up and close to him trying to dodge the eggshells coming at you and utilizing your small plane mode as much as you can. And then also parrying the little birds that are flying by during this first phase. Keep doing that, dodging anything he throws at you. And once you get your first ultimate, go ahead and use it on him to get him out of this phase as soon as possible. And again, still parrying any birds that we happen to come across, so long as you're able to without putting yourself in the line of fire. If you get another ultimate at the start of this phase, I do recommend using it, and that way you can make this a bit easier again. But you do want to use your tiny plane mode. You can get a few parries sometimes throughout that chaos. And you can use a special or two if you get one to try and end this phase. Just because it does take up a fair bit of screen space. And um, it can get a bit hectic there. It's not too bad if you're using the small plane mode to dodge the feathers. I accidentally shot that pink parryable bird, so don't be bad like I was. Alright, so we've made it to the next phase after that, and there's going to be a lot more of these spiked eggs. So what you want to do is just continuously shoot him, and then when it zooms in, you can go tiny plane mode and get out of there. He's going to be shooting more of those parryable blaster attacks. And this is a perfect time to rack up that special. And again, whenever the spiked eggs close in on the boss, you can use the small plane mode to back away. And then when they expand, you can use the small plane mode to get in there up close and personal and do some damage. Now, I don't really find this phase that hard personally. Um, so if you're comfortable going small plane mode and you know avoiding that, as you can see, I still only have two HP, so I'm not really sitting in a comfortable position, but I did want to save the special for the final area, or the final boss rather. But he does give you a lot of parryable things, so you're more than welcome to use your special there, and then you'll probably have another ultimate for this part right here. Start the battle off with your ultimate in this phase, and then switch to your bombs. You want to dodge all of the pills that are flying at you as well as some of the bullets, and you want to parry anything pink that you can, whether it's the pink pill or the pink boots. Now, I pushed it a bit close on this one, but again, we just need to try to survive. I went small plane mode, which came in clutch right there, and we got a victory. Again, definitely one of the hardest bosses, if not the hardest, on Expert. But go ahead and destroy him. Show absolutely no mercy. Once you've done that, we can move on to Rumor Honeybottoms on Aisle 3. We're already on Aisle 3 in Expert mode, so we're doing great, guys. Now we want Chaser, Lobber, Super 1, and Twin Hearts for this fight. Now it's pretty straightforward at the same time, so it's sort of similar to our regular attempt. You can use Chaser in the first phase to take out the cop, um, and the only difference will really be the amount of projectiles that come from the bomb that you can uh, parry if you're in a nice position to do so, like I got a few right there. And then also the amount of bees that come flying in. There's a bit more now. Phase 2 is exactly the same, which is great. And you can use Chaser if she's on the left side of the screen or the right side. And then lob her in the middle, just like our regular strategy like we did before. And then you can use your super whenever it's ready 
um, especially on phases or parts that you think you're not as confident in. She's right in the center. We had a special, so I went ahead and used it. And whenever she's in the middle, you want to use Lobber. And you want to try to dodge the little bullet bill B things. And if she goes to the right, we can switch to Chaser and then just focus on dodging these attacks while dealing some damage at the same time. Back to Lobber as she's in the middle. You can use a special here and there if you want to try and get her health as far down as possible so she'll go into phase three and then she's back on the right so we'll start off with chaser again she's going to do that triangle ability and as long as you're on the flat sides you won't get hit by it but you can also parry it if you are in a position to do so i'm going to keep jumping using the lobber ability and trying to dodge these bullets by jumping up and down through the platform Eventually, you'll do enough damage to put her in her final phase. And if you stay on the very left side or the very right side, your lobber should be able to hit the propeller and do some damage, and then also help build a special. As you can see, we almost have a nice special to use on her, and this will also make her fairly low HP by the time we're able to use it. This is the perfect chance to use it as I'm on the side of the screen, and it was more than enough to do a nice overkill. That's Rumor Honey Bottoms down. We are near the end of the expert run, guys. We are getting so close to the finish line and that platinum for Cuphead. Next up, Clan, we've got Captain Briny Beard. I want you to use Chaser, Spread, Super One, and Twin Hearts. Everything in this battle has been cranked the hell up. Everything is much faster. His projectiles, the barrel is more um, aggressive. The boat shoots cannonballs much faster than it did before on regular difficulty. Now, you want to try and parry as many things as you can possible, so that way once you have enough for an ultimate, you can go ahead and use it. Majority of the fight, I want you to be using the chaser gun. However, when you get these little fish dogs or bulldog fish, whatever you want to call them, you want to use spread to quickly dispatch them so that way they're not damaging you. Once the cannonball comes into play as well, you're going to be dodging that on top of the barrel and Briny Beard himself. So you're going to have to pay attention to a few things. That's why it's nice to use chaser for majority of the fight and then using your ultimate whenever it's ready. Again, we're going to swap back to spread as the bulldog fish come out. And then we're going to go right back to chaser and focus on getting some more parries. Sometimes it's good to trigger the barrel early as well, so that way you don't have to worry about it when it's down on the ground. Um, so if you feel like it may mess you up, give it a nice little trigger and then walk away from it. Spread is really good to get rid of the octopus really fast as well, but then I recommend jumping right back to Chaser so you can deal a lot of damage to Briny Beard. Ultimately, that's basically the fight. It's rinse and repeat while trying to dodge a lot of the shit that is flying at you because there is a lot of it. As you can see, I'm getting cornered with the barrel and the shark, so I quickly move over, trigger him, and then leave. Um, you don't want to really trap yourself in a corner like I nearly did. Same with the barrel here. I'm going to drop it. I've used a special. And then we have Chaser. And whenever he goes to use that beam, you want to crouch down. But you also want to make sure the barrel is not coming at you. Otherwise, you're going to take more unnecessary damage like I did. As you can see there, I triggered him. That way, he can go past me while the laser phase is going on. And then I can use a few more specials. Run over, trigger the barrel yet again. It's much better constantly triggering it. This one was a bit of a close call, um, but you really don't want to lose to the barrel. The barrel shouldn't be the threat. As you can see, I got hit by one of the fireballs as well, or whatever you want to call them, so be careful with that. But ultimately, keep using Chaser, your special, and you will kill Captain Briny Beard.
After that, next up, we have Sally Stage Play. You want the Chaser, Spread, Super One, and Twin Hearts for your loadout. Now, in the first phase, you can use Spread and then just dodge her aerial attacks by going under her. A lot of it's pretty much unchanged, especially in the first phase. You have these pink hearts that she kisses you as well, so make sure you parry those for a free special. Phase one is very simple, so you can make it through without getting hit, which is always nice. And then that way you can save your health for the harder phase. Keep damaging her with spread while avoiding all of her attacks. After a while, she's going to go into phase two. Now, there's going to be a lot more babies this time. A lot more milk bottles being thrown, a lot more of the little toy mice, whatever you want to call them. So right at the start, you want to use your special. As you can see, the kids are sped up pretty quick in the background. So make sure you're not, you know, just staying in one spot to leave yourself vulnerable. Dodge the toy mice, cars, or whatever you want to call them, and the milk bottles. Continuously using spread. And again, we used our ultimate at the start to try and end this phase as quickly as possible. This is the only sort of difficult phase. It's not really so much difficult, but... Um, there is a fair bit of stuff on the screen coming at you. The last two phases are pretty unchanged. You can switch to spread and start focusing all damage on her. But when the meteor comes out, you want to make sure you damage it with spread. So that way you get the star. So you can parry over that big wave. You can do a parry and a dash just to make sure you get it. And if you have a super built up, you can use that ultimate super as well. Make sure you're dodging the lightning bolts, and again, when the meter comes out, you want to parry the star, jump over the wave, preferably not to where you dash into the boss like an idiot like myself, but um, yeah, just make sure you're doing that so you can get over the wave and avoid more damage. For the final phase, it's the exact same strategy. We're going to go with the chaser method, jumping over the umbrella, dodging the roses, and just worrying about pretty much dodging while chaser does all the work for us. Her fight is very, very simple, much like her regular difficulty. Before you know it, you'll have another boss down. Don't get impatient with the dodging as well, because um, that's a very easy phase and you shouldn't really get hit like I did. Next up, we've got Werner Werman, and we want to use the Charge, Spread, Super 1, and Twin Hearts loadout. And in Phase 1, you want to do the Charge Attack, making sure that you're releasing every time it's fully charged to max. His first phase is pretty unchanged, aside from the fact that he shoots a lot more bombs. When he throws out these little domino pads, you can use them to parry and launch yourself over him. And he's also going to throw a lot more projectiles and you can those can be easily parried for some extra supers to build up keep using charge till it's max and launching it at him and then parrying and jumping over him first phase shouldn't take you too long with the charge gun now for phase two the bottle caps are a bit more um, aggressive and random right at the start of phase two you can go ahead and use a special really quick and then dodge his fire attack you want to pay attention to the sides as well as the boss himself. You can also go under the boss if needed, but you need to be quick because you do not want to get hit or trap yourself like I just did. Ultimately, keep using spread and you will get through this phase as quick as possible, being wary of bottle caps from each side. As you can see, I went under the boss there. I had to be really quick because within a second he was already dropping down. So you don't really have time to sit still in that phase but you'll be able to knock that one out fairly quick and build up another ultimate. Now when the cat comes out, you wanna be on the opposite side of whatever his hand is going towards and then avoid the debris falling from the ceiling. Keep using spread while that's happening. And then the moment the ghosts come out, you can jump to the very right or left side of the screen and use your ultimate to clear out all of the ghosts. Then it'll go back to him smacking his hand from either side and more ceiling debris falling down. All you have to do is dodge, 
keep using spread and you can pop a few supers here and there if you build one up and that is Werner warming down that's actually one of my favorite fights in the game I just like the whole concept of it I think it's pretty cool all right our next one is dr. Cal's robot all you need is a twin heart charm equipped and then we can jump right into it for the most part this fight is pretty unchanged you want to use your bomb at the start so you're hitting the chest as well as that bottom compartment you want to utilize going into small plane mode to dodge the airplanes and then you also want to parry the thing that comes out of his chest after that you can go to the head and focus on the satellite while dodging the blue projectiles as well as the bombs as well as the laser on his head so there's a fair bit of things you need to dodge he'll then start shooting out golden nuts and bolts again and while he's doing that you want to focus damage on his heart keep dodging the bombs as well and using the mini plane mode whenever you need to if you get overwhelmed you can get away with taking a hit or two on this fight it should be fine as soon as the heart is done and his head comes flying off you can use the ultimate to get him out of this phase really quickly as you can see we're nearly about to get him out of the phase I just keep getting swarmed by everything at the moment um, but that does a fair bit of damage and we can skip that phase basically next up we're in the final phase the projectiles are a bit faster and the electric pillars seem to be blocking you a bit more in this one they still do give quite a few items for you to parry and that's going to build up some easy ultimates that you can use on the boss and try and get him down before he kills you you're going to utilize your mini plane mode to get through a lot of those projectiles and whenever he stops for a moment you can quickly go in you have just enough time when you use your special as well you'll be given a few invincibility frames and that'll make sure that you don't just sit there and die you may still get hit a fair bit you can use your little one super at a time as well if you need to like I said tons of items to be parried as you can see I got a double one right there and it's building up a special like nothing so I have another ultimate already and I can go in for it and use it on him for some more very easy damage to get through this phase before I die again focus on the parries focus on dodging as well and then throwing a few ultimates in there and you got yourself Dr. Cal's robot completely defeated All right, after that, next up, we've got Calamaria. And this is another plane battle, so just equip the Twin Hearts charm and jump right into it. Now, she will spawn a lot more fish in this, and you'll also notice that the turtle and the seahorse spawn in a bit earlier than normal. Just keep trying to deal as much damage as possible, and when the ghosts come out as well, you can use the mini plane mode to move really quickly from the bottom to the top of the screen and dodge them and then just keep doing vice versa until they're gone. Try and parry as many puffer fish as you can, as many flames as you can, pretty much anything you can parry. Try to parry without taking any damage. As you can see, when the seahorse is out, if you use the mini plane mode, you can kind of bust through the water stream a bit easier instead of feeling like it's forcing you into the ghosts. And then you want to dodge these mines that the turtle's throwing out and then dodge the electric fish that this fish spits out. You're just going to focus as much damage as you can on her. You can use a special if you'd like. However, you do want to have an ultimate ready for the eel phase. Once there is quite a few eels popping up, we can use our special to try to knock them all out. As you can see, that took a fair chunk of them out. And you can even shoot towards the bottom of the screen a bit and take some out while you're fighting her and damaging her. And then make sure you parry some of the bullets that they're doing um, when they are pink and you're able to parry them. You can use your mini plane mode to dodge some of these if you get a bit overwhelmed. And you can move the analog in a circular motion whenever you turn to stone. Now her final phase, they basically have more of the green skulls. And she also does that beam that turns you to stone if I can think of it um, that beam will be happening a, a lot more frequently you can dodge it with the mini plane mode depending on where you're at on the screen 
but not always. Most of the time you'll get hit by it. You just want to make sure it's not going to make you run into anything else and then take unnecessary damage. As you can see, this one's not too bad. You should be able to get through with more than enough health. Use your little mini specials as you get them throughout the fight and you will have another boss down. We only have one boss left to finish off the third aisle and we are making it through expert mode like bosses. Moving on, we're on the Phantom Express. You want to equip the Roundabout, Chaser, Super One, and Twin Hearts. Roundabout still works wonderfully here for this first phase. You just want to aim away from the boss, do some occasional jumps, and make sure that Roundabout is taking all of these eyes out. You also want to keep an eye on the pumpkin and parry these bricks or tiles that come falling down. If you accidentally move the cart, you can move it back to the left. And then again, keep parrying any of the pink bricks that come by. Phase one will happen pretty quick. And then when you go into phase two, you can put the cart in the middle and use a super right off the bat. Now the next thing you want to focus on while you're damaging him is parrying more of the bricks while you can. Trying to get under him and doing some more damage and then getting more parries. You can stand on the side of the cart to avoid the arms if you aren't there in time. And then while it's transitioning to the next phase, you can parry a few more bricks to make sure that we have enough for an ultimate. Now you can keep the cart in the middle until you find out which one of these heads is going to attack. I got lucky and the left one was the one attacking. So then you can jump up on the right side and use your ultimate to quickly knock out one of the heads. And then you wanna make your way to the left so that way you can dodge his electricity attack. You can switch to chaser if it's a bit easier here for you, um, but roundabout does the trick as well. It's pretty much whatever you feel more comfortable with. All right, so we are on the last phase. Again, nothing's really changed. There's a bit more um, fire projectiles and, and things like that. So just be wary of that. You wanna switch to chaser like you did before. And then ultimately you're going to focus on parrying and opening the vulnerability point on the boss with that parry on his tail and then using the special whenever you do have enough. The special alone will do a shit ton of damage on that boss and you should be able to end his final phase fairly quickly. We actually only have two more bosses on expert and then we are going to be getting yourself that shiny new cuphead platinum. For king dice you want the charge spread Super One and Twin Hearts equipped. Okay, so we'll be using the same strategy we did on regular difficulty, starting off with rolling a three. Again, you can get yourself more hearts if you feel you need it, especially on Expert. And you will go to the Cigar Boss. Now he shoots these fireballs out a lot faster. There's a bit more cigarette demons and it does seem like that he switches the ashtrays a bit more frequently, just like that, for example. We're gonna be using charge for this again. Just keep using charge and letting go whenever you're at the max amount of charge. And these fireballs are really, really easy to dodge. Whenever he switches ashtrays, just jump over while still avoiding the cigarette demons. It's basically just a faster paced version of the regular difficulty. You guys will have no problem taking him out. This guy sucks ash, honestly. God, I hate myself. Um, so keep using charge and you will get through this pretty easily. As you can see, I have six HP, thankfully, since I have that perfect setup of getting multiple hearts and I'm gonna need it because I do pretty trash at the end. There we go. With that method, you'll get the cigar down nice and easy. Give him his tea bags. Tell him he sucks ash. All right, I'm, I'm done. Enough of that. After that, we can roll a one. Again, this is the exact same strategy. I'll have the dice on the screen. And you can take your time. There's no rush. I honestly sometimes would like... It kind of would do my head in a bit, and then I wouldn't know when to jump. So sometimes I was a bit slower than others. But as you can see, I have seven HP, which is amazing. It's a very good setup to have, especially if you're struggling. So you can keep hitting retry until you get a good layout. If you have a super, you wanna use it immediately on this boss. 
Now this boss is a little bit harder because he can throw out multiple gifts and you still have those hooded riders as well. So you want to make sure you're watching out for them as well as the gifts and then utilizing your small plane mode when you need to. You also want to parry as many horseshoes as you can so that way you can build up another special and keep nuking them as quickly as possible so you can get out of this boss fight. As you can see, we got him down pretty quick. I did actually get hit once, unfortunately, but even then, overall, it's not too bad of a fight. You guys should have no issues with it. Next up, we're gonna hit one to land on the safe square for the board. And then we're gonna hit another three, which is going to give us another heart. So at least we'll be back at seven hearts and we'll be fighting the monkey again. This is the same concept, except for he seems a bit faster at times, but pretty much just find the cards to match. And then once you match them, you can deal some damage. If he goes into his vulnerability phase when he's in the corner, just wait for him to get out. Don't try and hit him. It's just not worth getting hit over something silly. You're going to need all the health you need. That, that didn't make sense. You're going to need all the health that you want in order to take down the king dice in the final phase. So again, we're just playing match card if I can get a successful parry slap instead of just slap in the air. That's obviously not matching, and I figured that out. And then we finally <laughs> hit the wrong one, Jesus Christ. Just don't have the memory of a goldfish, and you guys have got this boss easy. Try and avoid the music notes by going in the mini plane mode so that way you're a bit more safe. You can actually go through the crane a bit as well. It's completely safe. As long as you're not getting hit by the boss, you just have to understand the boss's hitbox. As you can see, I still got the wrong card and then I finally got it. And I managed to get him pretty good right here because he was frozen there and I was pelting on him quite a bit. And sometimes you can get lucky like that depending on where he you know, starts that phase. Just like that, I'm starting to wail on him right away. Now you should have an ultimate built up by the time he's on his little final part of the phase. While you can use it on him for sure, I definitely don't recommend it on Expert. I think it's better to save it for um, King Dice, depending on how comfortable you feel with this part of the boss. If you're happy to do the monkey without a super, that's great. Um, if you rather use a super, that's great as well. You, you can do whatever you're more comfortable with, whatever gets you the expert kill. That's what matters. So after you get this last card, you can go ahead and activate your ultimate if you'd like. However, I'm going to just shoot him normal because it wasn't really too bad. Uh, and I felt confident with this one. So we'll just keep going until we get the good old knockout. And then now I'll be able to use my ultimate on King Dice, which will help with a lot of his health. And that means less parrying cards, because if you're trash at parrying cards, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick you can do. Just remember, you can parry the same card. That does make it a bit easier. Um, but the cards are in a more inconvenient space now, just so you're aware, since this is expert mode. See, as you can see, I messed that up. What you can do is instantly use your special. And if you're shooting him from one side of the screen, you'll see it after this part here. You can see right there, I needed to parry that same card a few times because it took a while for more to come out. Right now, I am completely messing up, right? I'm struggling. I'm starting to panic. I have four HP. Am I gonna beat him on expert? Awesome, I managed to get behind his hand. So how you can do this, it's not 100%, but you can start shooting him from one side, and then at the very last second when you think he's about to do the card move, because it's pretty much timed, you can run behind it. So again, I'm just on the right side, and then I'm going to last second go to the left side. If you do it too early, he's going to do it on the opposite side, meaning you're going to be exposed. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm probably not the best at explaining it. But you can see I'm just shooting him. I'm only getting a few shots in between each one, but I'm at least safe not taking damage. And then I'll run over last minute and do it again. So sometimes you may, you know, run over to the other side a bit early 
and then it won't work but it might actually be what you need to survive until expert as you can see i did it a bit too early there so i have to try and do the uh, parry and i thought i almost had it there but i didn't and it's because you really really need to utilize parrying the same card because it is in such an inconvenient place on this battle again last minute going behind him by now i'm shitting myself i'm like come on surely you don't have that much health i used a special on you um what more do you want from me that was my own stupidity if he puts his hand down please do not go under it i don't know what the hell's wrong with me sure enough though i got very lucky i did this method a bit because i was trash at pairing at the time if you're not very good at pairing this video is for you because i want you guys to be able to kill king dice on expert and this last bit can be pretty challenging all the mini bosses are pretty easy um, but king dice can be a bit brutal if you're not too sure how to do the pairing on the cards as you can see though with that method we did kill king dice we did it in a whopping seven and a half minutes so he is a pretty long fight but we only have one left for expert mode the devil i'm gonna need you to equip the pea shooter spread super one and twin heart now you're probably wondering is the devil much harder on expert no he's actually pretty much almost the exact same although you'll see a bit more minions come out so be wary of them but they will die really quickly with spread so i recommend using spread for majority of the fight because it does a lot of damage um, and it's it's pretty foolproof it, it does help a lot with the minions as for that move there with the goat attack you can do your jump at the very last second and then dash occasionally he will do these magic spells that you can parry or the fire like in the regular difficulty or even the balloons he still does this dragon phase as well and you can easily go under him and do a bit of damage you can also just jump over the minions another easy way to completely avoid them just be careful he doesn't do the goat attack while you're jumping over a minion because you may get hit and there's another hp point lost here's the balloon phase you just want to keep using spread and parry as much as possible for this whole entire first phase again we're dodging his goat attack we're just using spread you can toss in a few specials here and there as well you won't need a special until later so it's not like you really need to save them and if it helps you get through this phase easier then that's what i like to hear all right once he jumps out of his skin you're on the next phase we can drop down to the deeper depths of hell and this phase is basically the exact same you'll have that axe that comes out and you can pretty much stay on that platform there and dodge it and then you want to parry the earwax bombs dodge the poker chips as they fall down if they happen to be going on your platform and then same thing rinse and repeat with the axes earwax bomb it's random what side they spawn on but if it spawns on your side quickly parry it and it'll get rid of it very easily there's a few more poker chips that fall too so just be cautious that it's not about to fall on you using spread the whole time you should go through this phase fairly quickly and you probably could get away with using a special here as well if you'd like if you find yourself struggling but once you get to this phase here where he brings out some minions you can use a special to take them out and to also do a fair bit of damage to him so we can get him in his final phase you can stay in the middle platform just dodging everything and then if a poker chip comes down you can quickly dodge it we're in the final phase now it's pretty much the exact same go ahead and parry a tier keep shooting him and before you know it he'll die now this is going to pop the trophy beat the devil at his own game and best of all the platinum grand uproar if you're one of my real ones who made it all the way to the end of the video i want to first off say thank you but why don't you also leave a comment below that says Here's a real high class other than that clan thank you for sticking it with me through to the end we made it all the way through cuphead an amazing experience and i hope you guys really enjoyed the game if you have any other tips or anything else you'd like to add put them in the comments below and lastly if you're not a member of the clan consider subscribing so you can become one today other than that guys thank you again for your time and, and for watching this full guide i will catch you in the next one